On January 6, 1934, war restarted. After a couple of new disasters, General Kunt was humiliatingly sacked and replaced by General Enrique Peñaranda. Peñaranda wasn't too much better than Kunt, but Bolivia had last won a victory at Cañada's strongest, so-called after a soccer team. There, 80,000 soldiers clashed in what looked like a decisive battle. It was to be Bolivia's only major victory. The front moved southward to Fort Bolivia. It was to be Bolivia's Verdun. During an election campaign, President Salamanca assured his followers that Bolivian was impregnable. From the fort, an excellent road parallel to the Pilcomayo River led straight to the Villa Montes oil fields, only 100 kilometers away. Six attempts to take the fort failed, but thanks to inept handling of the defending troops, it was suddenly captured by an exhausted Paraguayan army. Both sides often fought with bravery bordering on madness. With the fort went tons of ammunition and 12,000 prisoners. President Salamanca went to the front to fire Peñaranda, but in actual fact it was Salamanca who was fired by Peñaranda. A brand new president came, José L. Tejada, and with the Paraguayans nearing the main part of Bolivia, Tejada was ready for a peace agreement. As a warning gesture though, Tejada ordered a general mobilization 30 months after the war started, and only six before it ended. Three years of fighting, 200,000 Bolivians were sent to the war. Of these, most of them were Indians from the Altiplano. 70,000 men never returned, and a further 55,000 were invalids. official parades in La Paz, limping Chacawar veterans would follow behind the goose-stepping younger soldiers. Paraguay had its economy ruined and 50,000 dead to mourn. Nevertheless, the army kept on pushing toward Camiri in the Bolivian hills where the oil producers were based. Here, 
years later, Argentine-born Ernesto Che Guevara failed in his bid to create a South American Vietnam. Then peace negotiations gained momentum anew. Under the presidency of Carlos Saavedra Lamas of Argentina, the representatives of Bolivia and Paraguay were invited to sign a peace treaty by representatives of the United States, Brazil, Chile, Peru, and Uruguay. Saavedra Lamas, invariably dressed in British style, was a courtly, slow-motion diplomat who for three years preached vague League of Nations slogans like, victory gives no rights, etc. Actually, 90% of the Chaco went to Paraguay, however. As the stubborn, barefoot Paraguayans stormed the oil-rich hills, U.S. representatives pressed more and more for a treaty. By one of those coincidences, the chief negotiator was Sproul Braden, son of the William Braden, who in 1921 had bought most of the oil concessions and transferred them to Standard Oil of New Jersey. <laughs> Finally, the peace treaty was signed on June 12, 1935. Saavedra Lamas got the Nobel Peace Prize. On the battlefield a month later, generals Peñaranda and Estigarribia met to shake hands. The Paraguayan offered Peñaranda a glass of French brute champagne and said, Your army is the best and most courageous in the whole world. The tall, grim Bolivian general answered, We fought as men do, general. <laughs> <laughs> 